This is a video for Unit 20 in the BTEC Applied Science Medical Physics Techniques. And this video is for 20.1 M1. Now, in P1, we were talking, we were just describing what radioactivity is, write down some equations to illustrate what's going on and how the atomic structure of a uh, of an unstable atom changes during radioactive decay. What M1 is about is how you measure radioactive decay. So that's what we're looking at. Um, the M1 criterion says, explain the random nature of decay and how it relates to half-life. So, first thing to do is establish what we mean by this idea of radioactive decay being random. So when, when we say random, what we mean is that you can't exactly predict when it will happen. Okay, and if you have a sample, you can't predict which uh, which unstable nuclei will decay at a given time. So you cannot predict when radioactive decay will happen. But you can, you can if you look at a large enough sample, sample of radioactive nuclei, you can use statistics to measure some characteristics of radioactive decay. Okay, so this is where statistics and probabilities come in. And you can look at some unstable isotopes and see that they decay faster than other unstable nuclei or atoms. So you can compare them if you use a large sample of radioactive nuclei and use statistics to measure them. Okay? Now, and when, when I say this, this is not exact. So the key thing you must remember here is that this is approximate. Okay? That's a key, key idea in, in all of these. As you're going through your assignment, you're going to be asked to relate two terms that I'm about to introduce to you to the random nature of radioactive decay. So keep in mind that this idea of the values being approximate, that's the key concept. So there are two things that you need to know about. There's the half-life and there is the decay constant. What I'm going to be talking about in terms of these is looking at the number of nuclei present that are unstable. Okay, so have a number okay so we're measuring how many unstable nuclei we have at a time the fewer the number of unstable nuclei you have then the less radioactive it is and the more you have the more active it is the Definitions of half-life and decay constant, they're in standard, so you just get them out of the notes, out of the textbook. Uh, there's a key idea with the half-life, so if you look on the handout, there is a word which is underlined because it's of key importance. So that word is mean. If you leave out the word mean, then your definition of the half-life is not correct. Okay, so... Mean time, this is the mean time for the number of nuclei to half, and the decay constant is the probability of a nucleus decay per unit time. So those, those are the definitions, you just need to look those up in the notes or textbooks. Those two terms are related to each other. This is the half-life. And that is equal to 0.693. I'm only writing that down as a 3SF. There are other digits, so divided by lambda. So this is the 
half-life, and that is the decay constant. Okay, that's the relationship between the two. Now, once you have the definitions down, uh, what we're going to do, task seven on the assignment brief says, by using a real value of the half-life of a radioactive isotope, explain what the half-life means by relating it to the random nature of radioactive decay. What I said just above that is that for your real, real value of a half-life, use this table again. So you've used this table for P1, those first three columns. For M1, you need to now use these. So choose one of these isotopes, anyone will do. Don't use one that you, one of your friends has used. Use a different one. So you might choose the fluorine 18. And you've got a value of a half-life, one hour and 50 minutes. So you take that value and you give an example of how it relates to the random nature of radioactive decay. So again, I'll use my own examples so that you see how it's done, but when it comes to writing an assignment, you need to use your own. So I'm going to use aluminium 34. And this has a half-life of 42 milliseconds. Now, I'm going to say initially, there are 1,024 nuclei. the aluminium-34 nuclei. Once the aluminium-34 decays, it becomes something else and is no longer counted for our example of measuring the half-life of aluminium-34. So we're going to start off with that many. Now, after 42 milliseconds, there will be... What, after the half-life, remember what I said for the definition, it's the mean time for the number of nuclei to half. So after 42 milliseconds, this number will have halved. So if we half that, that would be 512. Okay. And after another 42 milliseconds, which is total of 84 milliseconds, there will be, and you half that again. So if you half this, that's 256. Okay, so you can see that it halves each time. Now, what did we say about using our statistics? It's approximate. So you have to do a little bit of discussion about whether you would expect to see exactly this many nuclei, and if not, why not? Okay, so that, that's about relating the half-life to the random nature of radioactive decay. Okay? Additionally, if you're looking at your 1,024 nuclei, could you tell me exactly which ones, which 512 nuclei will decay or will remain after 42 milliseconds. Could you tell me that? Again, use that as a prompt to discuss the random nature of radioactive decay. Okay, so there's two things there. Which nuclei will decay and um, exactly how many will decay based on your knowledge of the half-life and the random nature of uh, radioactive decay. That's task seven. Task eight is very similar, but instead of talking about the half-life, talk about the decay constant. Okay. So my example here is to use a dice. Now a dice isn't unstable, but what you could imagine is if you roll a dice and you roll a six, then it's decayed. Okay. So we're going to use a dice or a die. But seeing as we have many of them, it will be dice. Okay? And a decay, the decay constant, if every time you roll a six, that counts as a decay, then 
the lambda is 1 over 6, which is 0.17 seconds to the minus 1. That's the, the decay constant has a unit as well. It's 1 over time, 1 over seconds. Okay, uh, again, we start off with 1,024 dice. Now this, the definition of the decay constant is the probability of a nucleus decaying per unit time. So, there's a 1 in 6 chance that a given nucleus will decay. Or, in one second, I can tell that a sixth of them will decay. Okay, so, in one second... should appreciate you definitely can't use this as your example because dice don't actually decay. Okay, so one sixth of the dice will decay, uh, which is how many? One sixth of 1024, that is 170. Similarly to the last task, you just need to now do a little bit of a discussion about will it be exactly that number? And do you know which of the 1024 dice will decay? So that's what I'm looking for, a little bit of discussion about that. Uh, again, you get your isotope from here. Now if you use fluorine 18 for this task, then don't use fluorine 18 again, use a different isotope for the decay constant. So mix it up a bit, there's plenty of variety there. Some of the values are very, very small. So you've got 3.1, sorry, 3.21 times 10 to the minus 5. What you want to do is that is the decimal for a fraction. So if you multiply those values by 100, then you get a percentage. So here we had 1 sixth, which is 0 0.17. If you times that by 100, then it's 17%. So if you work out 17% of 1024, then it comes out as 170. And you also have to be careful here, and possibly here as well, that you aren't using fractions of nuclei, because a nucleus can't part, partly regular, uh, decay. It either decays or it doesn't, so you have to deal with whole numbers in both of these cases. And you don't get to use my number for both of them. Okay, so you can. I've chosen 1024 because it divides nicely, but I don't want to see everyone coming up with 1024. So definitely for one, either this task or this task, use a different number to 1024. And now the last task, task 9, you now need to explain this relationship that I showed you in here. T half is 0.693 over lambda. So what happens if for a nucleus... If you're comparing, sorry, if you're comparing two new unstable nuclei like radon 220, cobalt 60, if you compare the half-lives of those and the decay constants, what does that tell you about this relationship? What if a nice tip has a larger T half? What does that mean for lambda? And don't just tell me numerically what it means, but just give it a little bit of context using the definitions that you've already written down for those. Okay, and that is M1, so that is on the assignment brief, tasks 5 to tasks 9.